Welcome to week 10 of Explore the Bible. We're continuing in the book of Ecclesiastes. Today we're in chapters 4 and chapter 5. A couple of different passages here and just some wisdom that comes out of this. So we'll just dive in and see what Solomon has to tell us. He says, Better is a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish king who no longer pays attention to warnings. For he came from prison to be king, even though he was born poor in his kingdom. I saw all the living who move about under the sun follow a second youth who succeeds him. There's no limit to all the people who were before them. Yet those who come later will not rejoice in him. This too is futile in a pursuit of the wind. What a contrast here between the, the poor, wise youth and the old, foolish king. And you look at the two and you say, well, you've got a poor youth and an, and an old king. Here's the man with power. Here's the man with influence. Here's the man who um, has learned life lessons and all that. He's lived a long life. And here's a young uh, kid, doesn't know much. He's not going to be able to make good decisions. But there is a difference because the young person is wise. The old king is foolish. He's a fool. And look at, here's the, the one key that tells us he is a fool he no longer pays attention to warnings. He's not listening anymore. Boy, this is a big deal, isn't it? When we stop listening, when we decide, hey, I don't need to hear what you have to say. I don't need to, to pay attention to other people. I don't need to, to listen to anything. I don't, I don't need to heed the warnings of Scripture. I don't need to heed the warnings of godly people telling me I'm going down the wrong path. I know my own path. I know what I'm doing. I know how to do this. Here is the foolishness, right? He's not listening to warnings anymore. He's not paying attention to what people are saying. And here's the reality, right? He came from prison to be king. He was born poor in his kingdom. He, so so he, he rose up, right? He should have become wise and understanding that he had come from nothing. But look, you're going to go on. Somebody else is going to succeed you. You've gotten this place and you think you've got all this power. You don't need to listen. You need to understand that your life is going to end you're going to come to an end. Somebody else is going to take your place. And look at this. Those who come later will not rejoice in him. Nobody's going to remember you. Woo! Man, what a dose of reality, right? Now, remember, Solomon's king. He's king, right? And yet he's he's seeing this. This is futile. It's a pursuit of the wind to think that, that just in having that place, now you've made it. Now you've got it. Now you can do what you want to do. Look there will come a time when you'll die and nobody's going to remember you. They won't remember your name anymore. Nobody will care what you did, right? So so if everything, and this is, I think, one of the, the, one of the clear messages of the entire book. If everything that you're counting on is here, on this earth, in this lifetime, if this is all that you're living for, if this is the sum total of your joy and existence, you're going to be really disappointed. We've said this before, right? This is it. It's futility. It's vanity. It's meaningless. It's a pursuit of the wind. You'll never catch it. You'll never get there. You'll never arrive. It will never be enough. And and in the end, your life ends. And now what do you have? Because all of this is gone. And so, so what's left? Okay. So guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Better to approach in obedience than to offer the sacrifice as fools do, for they ignorantly do wrong. Do not be hasty to speak. Do not be impulsive to make a speech before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Just as dreams accompany much labor, so also a fool's voice comes with many words. Okay, boy, here is just some good wisdom to listen to. Okay, and, and there is a little bit of this. Keep your mouth shut, right? Better, better to keep your mouth shut and people think you a fool than to open your mouth and prove it. Okay, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Be careful when you enter into the presence of God. Better to approach in obedience than to offer the sacrifice as a fool does when they ignorantly do wrong. So be careful, be slow, be obedient. Do things in a way, approach in obedience. Say, I'm going to do it all the right way. Then just come in and say, I'm going to offer a sacrifice. I'm going to get this out of the way. I'm going to go on and do what I want to do. Or I'm going to offer this sacrifice. God's going to love it because I've got the best sacrifice. You know, Whatever it is, this offer the sacrifice as a fool does because they ignorantly do wrong. They don't know any better. They haven't paid attention. They haven't they haven't seen how they're supposed to approach the Lord. They haven't seen how they're supposed to enter into his presence. They haven't paid attention. They've just kind of done it. 
Maybe it, it was just ritual for them. It was fulfilling a vow. It was doing uh, fulfilling this uh, obligation, right? I just got to do this now. So and then I'll get that out of the way. Then I'll go on and do something else, right? Look, there is something about uh, entering into a worship service, entering into church with uh, reverence. Now, you know, most modern churches, especially in America, most modern churches, people come in, you know, they're talking, we're laughing, we're joking. It's, we don't really pay attention to the attitude we have when we come in, but I've been in places, been in, in Korea, you go to a church in South Korea, you come in, you, you, you know, spend time praying before the service starts. The building is not a place of joking and laughing. It's a place of reverence and worship, you know, and I get there's kind of a balance there, right? I, I get that. I'm not saying that you shouldn't laugh. I'm not saying that you shouldn't say hello and talk to people. What I am saying is that sometimes we treat worship a little too cavalierly. You know, the, the entering into the presence of God just a little bit too uh, loosely. We're not really paying attention to what's going on, right? Do not be, I love this, do not be hasty to speak. Do not be impulsive to make a speech before God. You know, probably more of us preachers ought to listen to this than do, right? Certainly all of us should in our prayer life or whatever it is. Don't be hasty to speak. And then this next line is great. God is in heaven and you're on earth. <laughs> Remember where you are. You're on earth and God's in heaven. You are, There is a God and it ain't me and it ain't you, right? We need to remember that. Remember that. Let your words be few. Be careful about what you say. Measure your speech. You know, Paul talks about this when he talks about teachers and how they ought to be careful of the things they say. James talks about it when he talks about the responsibility that teachers have. We we have this. Be careful about that, right? I mean, you can have dreams will carry much labor. A fool's voice comes with a lot of words. A fool can talk a lot, you know. We can talk a lot. Sometimes we need to really pull back and just say, I need to listen. I need to be really careful to just listen and hear what the Lord says. I don't need to tell God what I want him to say. I just need to keep my mouth shut and hear what he wants me to hear. Okay. Then this uh, verse talking about making a vow. Okay. So we'll look at this. He says, when you make a vow to God, don't delay fulfilling it because he does not delight in fools. So if you say, God, I'm going to do this, then you better do it. Because to not do it is to be a fool. To say, I'm going to pay something, I'm going to give something, I'm going to do something, I'm going to give my time, whatever, you need to do it. Don't delay. Fulfill what you vow. Just, you know, just a basic thing. And this kind of goes back to this other thing about watching what you say. Be careful about making promises to the Lord about things you're going to do because God is going to hold you to those things, right? Better that you do not vow than that you vow and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth bring guilt on you. Do not say in the presence of the messenger that it was a mistake. Why should God be angry with your words and destroy the work of your hands? For many dreams bring futility, and so do many words. Therefore, fear God. Don't be so quick to, to make promises about what you're going to do. Be measured and, and wait and make sure this is what God wants you to do. Listen, God does not want you to make a vow to him just to make a vow. God doesn't want you to give something to him that he hasn't asked for. I mean, I mean, just coming to my mind right now is that thought about people that, that have old toys that their kids don't play with anymore that are broken, and they're like, we'll give that to the church nursery. The church nursery didn't ask for them, and they don't want them, okay? Don't give God your trash. Don't give God the stuff that, that you don't want anymore that's not any good anymore that's broken. Don't give that to God. Why would we give that to the Lord? Why would we give that to the church? Be careful about what you give and be careful about what you vow. Make sure that you are going to fulfill it, that it is what God wants you to make. Don't let your mouth bring guilt on you, you know, to, to say, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And then to say, oh, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have said that. Don't find yourself in that place, okay? Don't get in that place. Why should God be angry with your words and destroy the work of your hands? Well, for many dreams bring futility, and so do many words. People have all these thoughts and all these dreams about what they're going to do for the Lord, and we, we think we are, but we don't really mean it. It's maybe in the moment. Maybe it's something there. Look, be willing to take time to wait, to pray, to seek wisdom. Be willing to wait on the Lord and find out, okay, is this where God wants me to go? Is this what God wants me to do? Don't, I'd rather you not make, and I think the, we'd say this is saying, the Lord would rather you not make a vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. 
Okay, don't make a promise that you're really not going to keep. And, and maybe even a promise that God has not asked you to make, to vow to give something God has not asked for. Don't do that. Be careful. Be, be patient. Fear God. Therefore, he says, fear God. Fear what God would say. Listen, seek him out. This is, uh, you know, this point of the lesson is uh, why listen. I think that's the title of it. Look, shut your mouth. We need to close our mouths. We need to be quiet. We need to listen much more than we talk. We need to be be still before the Lord and make sure that where we're headed and what we're doing is what God wants us to do. It's not um, good enough to just make plans on behalf of the Lord. We want to make the plans God wants us to make and do the things God wants us to do and fulfill those things instead of make grand announcements about what we're going to do and then not fulfill them, not not work to make them happen. You know, we, we've got to make sure we're following where God wants us to go. I hope this has helped. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate you watching and share it with others. Subscribe to the channel, like it, comment. Let us know what you think, and we'll see you next week.